to a solution to a shortage. We want to show up when 911 is called and we want to show up with an ambulance that's working, uh, with the trained personnel, staffing. We want uh, the best care that we can provide. Carbon County turning to a mill levy as they aim to help emergency medical services. Plus, where the hell is Roscoe? You have to turn before the red barn and not past the second red barn. <laughs> Find out how the Grizzly Bar has survived 100 years in a 500-year flood. The MTN 430 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Thursday. I'm Andrea Lutz. It's a year long problem that might finally have a solution. In Joliet, the town's emergency medical services covers 320 square miles, but for a team consisting solely of volunteers and limited funds, providing even basic services can be challenging. As our Kelsey Boggs reports, a proposed mill levy on voters, June ballots could address the issue. Here in Joliet, emergency medical services are 100% volunteer based. EMS agencies struggle to provide even basic emergency services on a consistent basis, which is why many are hopeful of a potential June EMS mill levy that could fund all emergency medical services in Carbon County. 911, what is the location of your emergency? Police, fire, medical. These three agencies are responsible for keeping a community safe. I've been doing it for 20 some years because I love it and because I like to give back to the community. EMS or emergency medical services can often be a lifeline in a crisis. But in Carbon County, Carbon County is struggling in providing EMS services. Times are tough due to a lack of funding. In the state of Montana, EMS is not considered an essential service, so we do not get any tax dollars at all. Joliet's EMS crew consists of 24 volunteers. Been a volunteer for about a year. Um, uh, about a year and a couple months now. In the Red Lodge Roberts Ambulance District, a similar scenario. We have four full-time paramedics, and then we have 50-plus uh, volunteers. And for Clark's Fork Valley Ambulance... We have currently eight volunteers, no paid staff. We're covering about 215, 220 runs per year with that staff. In February, Carbon County Commissioners approved a resolution to bring an EMS mill levy before voters to help fund all emergency medical services throughout the county. Everybody hates the sound of more taxes, but it's very very small in comparison to other things and what we can provide. This after Carbon County funding structures for ambulance services were proven to be insufficient for the three ambulance services in the county. Last year there was a total of 33 calls that uh, an ambulance did not respond to and so we're looking at um, correcting that. EMS in Carbon County is a, kind of like a three-legged stool. We rely on each other. We may have, you know, one really solid leg, but if one of those other legs fall, the whole thing is going to collapse. The levy would begin this year and remain permanently, with the owner of a $300,000 home paying about $50 more in taxes each year. We want to show up when 911 is called, and we want to show up with an ambulance that's working, uh, with the trained personnel, staffing. We want uh, the best care that we can provide, and by supporting the, the levy, that supports our response. In Carbon County, Kelsey Boggs, MTN News. A Crow agency man considered by police as a transient is the machete armed man who was shot and killed in downtown Billings by police yesterday. The Yellowstone County Coroner's Office says 45 year old James Bennett died in that incident. Bennett died from a gunshot wound to his torso. Officer Zach Wallace, an 11 year veteran of the department, pulled the trigger. Seven officers responded with the police chief saying they tried to take down Bennett with a taser. But when that taser became ineffective and when he presumed to reach for the machete, Officer Wallace shot him. The official cause of death is a homicide. President Joe Biden says pro-Palestinian campus protests aren't making him rethink his Middle East policies. His comments come as police break up an encampment on the campus of UCLA. Hundreds were arrested and officers remain at universities across the country. Bradley Blackburn has the latest. Students at Portland State University were told to shelter in place Thursday as police cleared out the library, which had been occupied by protesters. Police say they found tools, improvised weapons, and paint balloons. And this is what remains after police cleared out the pro-Palestinian encampment on the campus of UCLA. Overnight, officers in riot gear moved in, ripping apart the barricades that had been set up. More than 100 protesters were arrested. We need to keep protesting, and that's the only way change will be made, right? By resisting the status quo. So. As the day wore on, officers continued to make arrests in areas outside the encampment. 
We are still seeing the uh, resistance on the far end uh, to my right. As protests on college campuses nationwide escalate, President Biden spoke out condemning the violence. Breaking windows, shutting down campuses, forcing the cancellation of classes and graduations. None of this is a peaceful protest. At George Washington University in D.C., there were dueling protests you are not alone. between protesters who were against the war in Gaza. Humanity wins when we bring them home. And pro-Israel demonstrators who want the focus to be on the release of the hostages. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. If you're having a tough time landing a new job, you might not be alone. Job openings fell to the lowest level in three years, and new data shows employers posted 8.5 million jobs in March. That's less than economists expected. Right now, there's roughly one position for every job seeker. Meanwhile, the percent of people quitting their jobs is at its lowest level since August of 2020. I think we can all agree today had enough wind to it. So as we start getting into tomorrow, the good news is we'll start to back off from those windy to breezy conditions, but the temperatures are still cooler than average. The weekend still on track for some very pleasant conditions, especially Saturday. By Sunday, we'll see some of the warmest readings, but that's just before our next weather system comes in. And by Sunday evening into the early part of next week, we'll be talking about rain and snow. Details on the forecast are only a few minutes from now. Montana's health department wants more input from veterans to help them for long term veteran care needs in the state. So it's extending a survey deadline to July 15th. That survey is meant to examine the state's veteran population and gauge the needs of the future. Things like nursing homes, in-home care and Alzheimer's services. The survey can be completed online or by email. So far, the agency has received 3000 survey responses. A Billings pharmacist is just one Republican entering into a crowded race for Montana's Eastern District congressional seat. Congressman Matt Rosendale will not seek another term, leaving 12 candidates vying for that job. Tonight, our Augusta McDonnell introduces us to Kyle Austin. I'm not a fan of Matt Rosendale. Um, that's kind of why I wanted to run against him in the first place. Austin lost to Rosendale in the 2022 Eastern District Republican primary. Austin is originally from Haver, but opened Farm 406 in Billings during the pandemic. He says he will lean on his experience farming in Haver to tackle what he believes will be one of the first challenges for the next representative. The farm bill is huge. Um, Congress has a very big impact on the farm bill. The last congressional uh, representatives failed to to do a new farm bill, and so that's going to be a big challenge for whoever's elected. He wants to bring new business to the state to boost the economy and offset the property tax burden on homeowners. As a congressman, I would like to bring in a fertilizer plant up in the Sydney area, eastern Montana, where we can start making our own fertilizer for the farmers. We're going to create that economic stability, create the jobs. He also proposes increasing gaming and entertainment opportunities in certain cities and placing toll booths at the state border. Anybody that is not a state resident coming into our state that has an impact on our economic, our economy here, they pay a toll fee to come in to enjoy our state parks and, and our, our culture here. Austin says when it comes to reproductive rights, he doesn't want to see abortion used as a form of birth control, but says it should be available in some circumstances. There should be some guidance from the federal level that um, that prevents one extreme to the other. And so should abortion be illegal in certain circumstances? Yes. Okay, now the state should create the criteria on who, when, where, and then like I mentioned, create that database to where people are put in a database so they can be tracked and criminalized if necessary. And tomorrow we roll on with our candidate profiles meeting Miles City State Senator Ken Bogner. About is sponsored by Garden Avenue Greenhouse and Garden Center. If you've lived in Montana long enough, you've probably heard the phrase, where the hell is Roscoe? That question has become the fodder of bumper stickers and t-shirts, but there's more to the small town that meets the eye. Our Charlie Kleps explains in this week's Out and About. If you've ever visited the small town of Roscoe, you've probably checked out the Grizzly Bar. In fact, it might even be the reason that you're in Roscoe. It's a legendary place that's been around for nearly 100 years. 
we are out in the middle of nowhere. There isn't much to the town of Roscoe. There's 13 people that live in town itself. Even the residents are hard to find. We're very remote. People don't know where we're at. It's a place you could easily drive by without noticing, but if you did, you'd be missing out on one of the most famous bars in all of Montana. It's iconic. It just It's a legend. The legendary Grizzly Bar has stood here since the 1930s. Current owner Jennifer O'Shea has been in charge for the last 21 years. It had a reputation of its own. It doesn't, I mean, we do very little advertising. It's just basically word of mouth. The bar's reputation well known, perhaps helped by a saying that can be found everywhere inside. Nobody really knows where it came from. It's just, it's part of our lore. The simple question, where the hell is Roscoe, has fittingly lived inside the bar for as long as anyone can remember. I um, have made several phone calls to past owners, and they all said it was here when they had it. You won't find a more peaceful setting for a bar and restaurant in Montana, but that wasn't the case just two summers ago. It was wild. We couldn't get here for three days. The historic floods of 2022 rerouted the East Rosebud River, nearly wiping away the town. The images, still jarring to O'Shea, proof that the historic bar was almost no more. The bar was an island. There's just water all around us. It's, and you just... We just never thought that would ever happen. Miraculously, it survived the high water, and things are starting to return back to normal. The seasonal bar opened its doors for another summer on Thursday. It was a struggle. It was rough, and I think right now we're finally coming back up out of it. But soon, one thing won't be the same. O'Shea, after 21 years, is looking to find a new owner. In my opinion, it doesn't matter who's running it. It just has its own thing going. And while she says it's sad to see her era at the Grizzly end, she's looking forward to coming back as a visitor. I'm excited to be the person on the other side of the bar as opposed to behind it. In Roscoe, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 430 News on Q2, a special Olympics program is instilling the love of sports for tribal youth with and without disabilities. We'll show you in just a bit. But first, another chilly and windy day out in the weather front. Will those tides turn for the weekend, though? Ed will let us know right after this.